here's an example of a normal distribution. I have here a mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 15. And so just a quick sketch, I can put the 80 right in the middle of the bell. Okay, so we'll assume it's the bell curve because it's a normal distribution. And what I want to do then is kind of fill in the different points um, that correspond to adding and subtracting a different number of numbers of standard deviations. Okay, so if 80 is the mean and you want to go one standard deviation above, okay, so each of these dashed lines represents one additional standard deviation above and below the mean, then if the standard deviation is 15, then you add 15 to get 95. Okay, so 95 would be one standard deviation away. Add another 15 to get 110. That's two standard deviations away. Okay, so if this is, uh, let me write this in another color. If this is x bar then, then here we have x bar plus one standard deviation. And here we have x bar plus two standard deviations. And then if I add a third standard deviation, that would be 125. So that would be x bar plus three standard deviations, three s's, okay? Uh, and going the other way, if I were to subtract off standard deviations, the first one would be uh, 80 minus 15, which is 65, and then subtract another 15 to get uh, 50, and then you subtract off another 15 to get 35. And so I can fill in the notation here. This would be the first one is x bar minus one standard deviation. This is x bar minus two standard deviations. And here we have x bar minus three standard deviations. Okay, so we have those filled in. Um, so you can see how this builds out from the mean on either side. We also now know that the, uh, that roughly 68%, these markers put away here, 68% uh, of the data falls in between the first uh, one standard deviation on either side. 95% um, I've seen this. Let's see if I can get this look to look kind of nice. So here's 95% will fall between two standard deviations on either side. And of course, 99.7 will fall uh, between three standard deviations on either side. Okay, so that almost encompasses all of the data when you get within three standard deviations. So now we can answer some interesting questions, and you'll see some of these pop up in the homework. Um, what percent of the data items, data items, that should be plural, fall in each of these categories, or ranges, I suppose you could say. Uh, and so the first question is, between 50, uh, 65 and 95, okay? Well, between 65 and 95, you have one standard deviation on either side, and so that would have to be the 68%, okay? And of course, this is an approximation, right? So we could say approximately 68%. Maybe I'll even do this in a different color so that the answers kind of pop here. So approximately 68%, right? Between 80 and 110, now this is where it gets a little bit tricky because we're gonna have to start thinking about these as individual slices uh, of the distribution. So between 80 and 110, we're looking at the right-hand side of two standard deviations. Well, we have to assume there's symmetry here as well. So if 95% fall between two standard deviations, half of that will be to the right and half of that will be to the left. So what's half of 95? What is half of 95? 40. 
47.5. So approximately 47.5%, right? So that's 95 over two, essentially. It's half of that 95, all right? Uh, between 50 and 65, let's get rid of that. Uh, between 50 and 65, so now I'm just looking at this one sliver running up between the second and first standard deviation below the mean. Uh, now that's a little bit tricky. What I need to do is do a subtraction between the 68 and the 95, but that subtraction gets me how much is on in the two gaps, one to the right and one to the left. Then I have to cut that in half to get the stuff on the left. That'd be one way to do it anyway. Um, there's other ways to calculate these. I'm just, I'm giving you one way. One, one would be to cut each of these in half and then subtract them. So a, ver a variety of things you could do. So what I'm gonna do is so take the difference between the two. So that would be 95 minus 68. Uh, let's borrow it in. Well, I do have my calculator, but I didn't want to get it out. Um, that's uh, 27. And if I cut that, so 27 has to fill in both sides here, the right and the left. And if I cut that in half, that's going to give me um, 13 and a half. So approximately 13.5% of the data will fall between 50 and 65. Okay. If you want to look above 125, so 125 is way out here on the end. That's three standard deviations out. And we want everything beyond that, okay? Well, you can think about um, everything between, well, how do I want to do that? Yeah, everything between 35 and 125. So that's almost everything I'm looking for, except I'm also including some stuff out here I want to subtract off. But this is 99.7. The difference between that and everything is 0.3 that difference is split up evenly between the two tails, okay? I only want the right tail. So I take the 0.3 and cut that in half, right? So it's basically the 100% minus 99.7, which is 0 0.3, and then I divide that in half to get the right side, and that should be, um, so 0.15% approximately, 15 hundredths of a percent very small amount uh, out on the right. And then if I want to look at everything below 65, so everything from here back, uh, a couple different ways to do that again. What I would do is say that 80 falls at the 50% mark. Um, if I take half of the 68 off, and that'd be this region, um, half of 68 is 34, take 50, minus the 34, so half of the data falls to the left of the mean. 34% of it is in this one sliver here, or one strip, and so the rest will be below 65. And so I do that subtraction, and I should get, what, 16? So that would be approximately 16%. Okay? So hopefully I've done the arithmetic right. I, I know I've done the, the logic uh, correct. Um, and so you can kind of see how you can combine these different regions to get different percent of the data that falls in them. Now again, it won't be perfect. That's why I put approximations on these. Um, but it's gonna be pretty close, okay? In a, in, a, in a typical normal distribution with a large data set.